Uh, so my name is Indraji. I'm the director of engineering for the profiling product here at Sentry. Uh, profiling is a brand new product at Sentry, and my team has been working on this for the past year or so, and I'm here to, to walk you through it. So some context on the origins of profiling. So profiling actually came from the acquisition of a startup that I co-founded called Specto. Uh, Sentry acquired Specto in November 2021, and for the past nine months, my team has been working on integrating Specto into Sentry, um, improving the developer workflow, and extending our mobile uh, profiling support to additional platforms. So you might already be familiar with the performance product at Sentry. And so performance transactions are a really great way of uh, visualizing the ordering and the duration of the high-level operations that occur in your application. Um, and so this is great for tracking things like how long network requests take, how long database queries take, and things like that. Um, so the, the kinds of questions that you might seek to answer using a performance transaction are things like, how long does it take my app to warm start? Or how long does a network request that's blocking a UI render take to run? Profiling is a little bit different. So profiling is focused on the use case of client-heavy workloads. So let's say you have some code running on the device that's extremely CPU intensive. So this could be a thing like um, expensive image processing or audio processing. It could be um, complex UI rendering with thousands of views or components. Um, it could be you know, running inference on a machine learning model. Stuff like this where you need, really need deep visibility into what exactly is executing on the client. So you might have seen from the previous example, we have, um, you know, we know from performance that the app takes two seconds to warm start. But why does it actually take two seconds to warm start? What code is running inside the application that causes it to take two seconds? Or you might have noticed that you're scrolling a list, a, a long list of items in your app, and you're finding that the scrolling is janky and it's dropping frames. Um, you might know that it's dropping frames, but why does it drop frames? Like what code could be running on the main thread that contributes to the frame drops? These are the types of questions that profiling is here to answer. So just to sum this up, um, the relationship between performance and profiling is basically like if you were to take a span, which is kind of opaque in this case, you know, you have a span that takes two seconds, and you want to take a magnifying glass to it and understand exactly what runs during the time when that span is measured, what you have is a profile, which gives you function or code level visibility into exactly what's happening when that span is running. So now I'm going to do a uh, live demo of profiling. Um, so I'm going to start here. So going back to our performance example, um, we have here a transaction that was captured while we were scrolling through um, a mobile app. And you know, we have a duration for this scroll interaction. We know that it's dropping some frames because you see there's 60 slow frames out of 365 total frames. Um, but this alone doesn't give us enough context to diagnose why this might be happening. So now I'm going to open the profile that we collected for the same transaction. Um, so this is the, uh, what we call the flame chart visualization. If you've used other profiling tools, uh, maybe like Chrome DevTools or something, you might be already familiar with what this is. But a brief explanation is that we have time on the x-axis. So you can see that this particular profile ran for just above uh, seven seconds. Um, on the y-axis, we have the function call stacks that were captured here. So we have the root frame starting at the top with the main function going all the way down uh, to the child frames here. And at a glance here, um, it's kind of hard to um, understand what's going on. I mean, we can zoom and pan, and we can see all the data that's been collected here, but it's really a lot to parse. Uh, so you need to find a starting point for where you, where you might start to debug why your app is dropping frames. So one of the things that we can do here is we can change the color coding scheme of the flame chart to uh, categorize by system versus application frames. So what this does is it colors the frames that are in the mobile SDK, the iOS SDK, the system functions, separately from the application code. So you can see the beige colored frames are system frames, the blue colored frames are application code frames. So you can see from the minimap, most of our frames are beige colored. Um, and then there's a few here that are blue. These, this is the code that's actually running in our app. And so a good place to start debugging is always the code that you control, the code that you own. And so here we can see there's a function, uh, table view self row at index path that's called pretty consistently. So in this particular instance, it takes about 230 milliseconds. Uh, it keeps repeating itself all the way throughout the profile. Um, so this is called very frequently. Um, and we can actually go here and, and we can also visualize by frequency to see that this, you know, the darker frames are the more frequently called frames. Um, so if I click into this frame, I can um, look at the call tree here. This is a tree visualization of the same stuff that's in the flame chart. And we can see that a significant amount of the runtime of that self-heroic index path function is 
um, this component separated by function, which is essentially a string splitting function. You give it a large string, uh, give it a delimiter, and it splits it into an array of strings. And this takes about 44% of the runtime of that self erode index path function. So if we like, take a quick look at the code here, um, this is the code for um, the application. Uh, so you can see here I have a call to component separated by inside my uh, self erode index path function. Um, and so we know that this, this line of this function is responsible for the majority of that function's runtime. So um, an optimization I might make here is instead of splitting this constant string, um, every time the cell is rendered, I could change it so that uh, I separate the string once at the initializer, and then my um, implementation of the self row at index path function just becomes a simple cache lookup, which should be much faster. Um, and so just to reiterate, like the change we made here is we pulled out that component separated by call from these functions here, um, did it once, and then we're just reading the cache result. So if I go back and I look at a new profile, and this was collected after we made this code change, um, I can look at the uh, color coding here again, change it to system and application frames, and straight away I see that in this version of the flame chart, um, I don't see those blue frames highlighted here. I mean, we see the frames at the top, which are just like your top level main function and stuff, but that um, blue self erode index path function seems to be gone. We can also search for it um, in the filter here. So here you might find a few instances um, of similar functions, but this is not, these are not the, the function that we were looking at earlier. So basically, what we're noticing here is that that particular function has been eliminated from the new flame chart, uh, and now we understand that um, you know, we've, we've made that particular optimization. Uh, this should improve scroll performance and so on. So this was a demonstration of how you can go from what is a transaction that's like somewhat difficult to understand um, to more deep analysis at the code level using profiling to fix a performance issue. Um, going back to the slides, um, a few things to keep in mind uh, for apps that can currently use profiling. So we currently only support native iOS and Android. Um, we don't support hybrid mobile frameworks. However, we are expanding uh, to support other platforms. We're working on support for things like Python and Node, and, and those are coming later. Um, the second major requirement is that you must already instrument your application performance transaction. So if you're already using performance, uh, enabling profiling is as easy as a one-line change. If you're not already instrumenting with performance, uh, you should enable performance. Um, and then third, uh, we only currently support CPU profiling, so if you wanted to profile like, you know, you want to do memory captures or like, uh, understand like how your memory usage changes over time or things like that, um, or GPU profiling, that kind of stuff is not currently supported. Um, and so with that, uh, I encourage everyone to go try profiling today. If you have a um, mobile app, an iOS or Android app, profiling is now launched to all Sentry customers in beta. So if you go to your Sentry dashboard, you'll see the profiling tab there. Um, and if you click on that, it'll walk you through the onboarding flow for, for getting profiling set up in your app. Um, if you want to learn more about profiling, scan this QR code or uh, navigate to the Sentry website where we have documentation on profiling. And um, the entire profiling team is on Discord, and they're there to answer any questions you might have about profiling. And that's all. Thank you, everyone.